Hi guys, in today's video we're going to take a look at what is the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve, the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve looking at the influence of temperature and catalysts, an exam style question and finally a summary. So what is the Boltzmann curve? Well, the Boltzmann curve shows us the distribution of molecular energies in a gas at a constant temperature. So what we see is that some molecules move fast and have a high energy, as shown here. But some molecules also move slow and have a low energy, as shown here. But majority of the molecules we find have an average energy. So here we have our Boltzmann curve. On the x-axis we have the kinetic energy and on the y-axis we have the number of particles with that specific kinetic energy. And there are a number of features of the curve that we're going to have a look at. First of all, the area under the curve is equal to the total number of molecules in the sample. Second, the curve starts at the origin. There are no molecules in the system with zero energy. And thirdly, only molecules with a greater energy than the activation energy can react. And we can mark the activation energy onto our graph where it applies. So now we've had a brief introduction to the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve. Let's have a look at it in specific relation to increasing the temperature of a reaction. Well, we know that at higher temperatures, the kinetic energy of the molecules increases. So what we'll see is that from our original curve, we have a slightly different curve. The peak moves to the right and it becomes a lower peak. So here, the curve labeled T2 is symbolizing a curve at a higher temperature. Now it's important to notice that the area under the curve remains the same. The number of molecules in the system is exactly the same, but there are some slight differences. So what are they and what's happening? Well, the molecules are moving faster as they have more kinetic energy at a higher temperature. So we see a greater proportion of the molecules have an energy greater than the activation energy. So if we take a look at our graph, we can see that the activation energy is marked on here as Ea. And we can see the proportion of molecules with energy greater than the activation energy at T1, the lower temperature, is shown in dark green. Whereas the proportion of molecules with energy greater than the activation energy at T2 is shown as the area that's green and the area that's grey. So that's that total area altogether. We can see it's increased. So this is because there are more successful collisions occur in a given length of time and therefore the rate of reaction will increase. So now I've had a look at the curve in relation to increasing the temperature. Let's have a look at the curve in relation to the presence of a catalyst. Well, we know that the catalysts lower the activation energy of a reaction, and we can see that on our curve here. Here on the left, we have an activation energy with our catalyst, which occurs at a lower energy than the activation energy with no catalyst. So we know that our catalyst provides an alternative reaction route, a route that requires a lower activation energy. Now, they don't change the distribution of the molecular energies. You can see we haven't got a second curve forming. Instead, we just have this lower activation energy. So let's quickly recap what exactly is happening when we add the catalyst. Well, more molecules in the system have an energy in excess of the new lower activation energy provided by the catalyst and the alternative reaction pathway. So there are again more successful collisions in a given length of time. That's more collisions occur with energy in excess of the new lower activation energy. And therefore we see the rate of reaction increases. Shown below is a Boltzmann distribution of molecular energies we can see that here. In part A, we're asked to label the diagram with the activation energy of the reaction with and without a catalyst. So firstly, if we suggest an activation energy without our catalyst, it might be somewhere around here. Not many particles have an energy in excess of the activation energy. But with our catalyst, we know the activation energy is much lower and more particles have an energy in excess of the activation energy. We can see that with no catalyst, only the particles under the graph over here have enough energy to react with an energy in excess of our activation energy. But when we lower it with our catalyst, it's all these particles over here that can react. A nice and simple feature of our graph to get us that first mark. Moving on to part B, we're asked to explain how the addition of a catalyst increases the rate of reaction, making reference to the Boltzmann distribution of energies. So we know that our catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. We've just shown that on our graph. As a result, more particles have an energy in excess of this new lower activation energy. And therefore, more successful collisions occur per unit of time. 
For our first mark, we've explained that the catalyst provides an alternative reaction pathway with a lower activation energy. Our second mark comes from explaining that more particles have an energy in excess of this new lower activation energy. And our third mark for explaining that therefore it's more successful collisions that occur per unit of time that increases the rate of our reaction. In part C, we're asked to add a curve to the diagram above, showing the effect of increasing the temperature on the Boltzmann distribution. Well, we know that when we increase the temperature, we increase the rate of reaction. And if we have a think about the curve we're going to draw, what we need is something with the same area, because it's the same number of particles, but with a lower peak. So let's take a look at how we're going to draw that curve and why. So it's going to have the same area, because it's the same number of particles, but a lower peak and shifted to the right, something like this. This is indicating that more of our particles have a higher energy as we've increased the temperature. However, there is exactly the same number of particles. We've not increased that. So if we go ahead and label our curve, and if we take a look at the question, we can see that the question holds two marks. Each of these marks comes from a different feature of our graph. The first, for having a curve with roughly the same area, and the second for a lower peak, just through shown in our graph above. Moving on to part D, we're asked to explain how increasing the temperature increases the rate of reaction, again making reference to the Boltzmann distribution of energies. Well, we know that increasing the temperature shifts the curve to the right, as we showed above. If we take a look at our curve that we've drawn, we can see exactly what impact that has. So here we have our curve that we've just drawn showing the increased temperature. We can see that with our lower temperature, this many particles have energy in excess of the activation energy. However, with our increased temperature, more particles have an energy in excess of the activation energy, even if there's no catalyst used. So just extending that line, we can see that this many particles have an energy in excess of the activation energy if we increase the temperature. So let's go ahead and explain that in our answer. As a result of more of our particles having an energy in excess of the activation energy, more successful collisions occur per unit of time. This question holds three marks. The first comes from explaining that increasing the temperature shifts our curve to the right. The second for explaining that as a result, more particles have an energy in excess of the activation energy. And the third for summarising that and explaining that therefore more successful collisions occur per unit of time, increasing the rate of reaction. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level chemistry resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap provide smiley face and together let's make A-level chemistry a walk in the park.